Well, welcome everybody to our online program from the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And the topic uh, this time is going to be on a myth of addiction. It's kind of interesting if you watch television or read Time magazine, read media articles online, uh, this uh, description they give of addiction. So take as an example the new television show Elementary. It's uh, the new Sherlock Holmes. So Holmes is a recovering drug addict. And we get this information from the TV program that uh, he's got a disease. Uh, they made that clear in uh, one, uh, one episode, or actually several episodes. Uh, he's got a problem that he needs help to deal with. He cannot deal with this by himself. Uh, if he has just one drug, it's going to be a complete disaster and everything will be destroyed. Uh, he's uh, completely powerless over this drug use. This kind of idea. Or take another example, Time Magazine. Uh, the most recent edition that I read on addiction uh, sort of showed the uh, obligatory picture of the brain and called it a disease. And uh, this brain disease, uh, the, again, the addict is, um, he operates from what they call compulsion. So it's a brain disease, the defining feature is compulsion, and so the addict has really no choice. He uh, gets these really wicked cravings. And then it doesn't matter whether he wants to use, doesn't matter whether he feels any pleasure from it, it's completely irrelevant. He's going to use anyways because he can't resist the cravings. Okay? And that's why addicts use. And this, this story that we keep hearing over and over again, this, uh, this idea that it's, uh, somehow it's a disease of the brain and of which you need help to overcome. You couldn't possibly do it on your own. Uh, uh, you really need medications for it and professional help. Uh, you have like one drug and then the whole thing's a disaster. Uh, this is an interesting story uh, that keeps appearing, but the question is like, you know, how real is it? So consider this, for example. Uh, we know that a lot of recovering opiate addicts as they get older will have, for example, open heart surgery. And it is routine to give a narcotic painkiller. So if the theory is actually correct, then you would think that all of these people taking opiates for pain, uh, for you know this from the heart uh, surgery, I mean they should all relapse. I mean, that's just the way it should operate, right? But that's not what happens, and we know that's not what happens. The research is pretty clear on this. So how do you make sense of that, right? Or the other thing, uh, we know, for example, that uh, there are lots of people who use drugs but who are not addicted, what the scientists call an instrumental use of drugs. So we know, for example, exams are coming up. So lots of people will be using amphetamines to keep awake, so study for exams. Now, if it's true that somehow, you know, this one drug is going to plunge everyone into addiction, then anyone in recovery uh, using something would, would automatically be plunged into recovery. And again, we know, yeah, it's not, it doesn't really happen that way in real life. So just a couple of examples of maybe this story that we keep hearing uh, through the media may not be entirely accurate. Anyway, in uh, this online program, we'll look at some of these ideas and we'll see you know, how well they're supported by the science.